On August the 12th, 1812, the Kentuckians headed north to what they confidently predicted would be a short, decisive victory. Over a, a thousand Kentuckians, mostly militia, but some infantry, came north from Kentucky, Lexington area. They left in August and were dressed appropriately for the weather. Um, but after fighting their way up here, battling both the climate and the rough terrain and Native Americans, uh, they arrived here in the winter of 1813, January, when Michigan was experiencing a very, very cold winter. It's a horrendous march. They're going through deep snow. They're not well equipped. They're not well dressed. They're not well supplied. Uh, they're not well armed in a lot of ways. Some of the ones who fought in the later fight only had 10 rounds of ammunition per person. We probably had in the neighborhood of 100 Kentuckians that died due to starvation, due to the exposure to elements. They were tired. They were incredibly fatigued. They had walked all the way from Kentucky uh, through um, the horrid black swamp at lands of Ohio and came here inadequately dressed and inadequately provisioned. They hear of a British garrison that's well supplied with food and clothing and they decide to try to capture this garrison and the first battle of Frenchtown takes place where they do have a victory and the Americans fight well. In the process, they rush up in a hurried way and don't fortify the position. They know the British are on their way, but they put people in open fields uh, without any trenches or any kind of earthworks to protect them. And then on the morning of January the 22nd, at six o'clock in the morning, the attack comes from the British and the Indians as expected. This one wing of the army disintegrates almost and flees. General Winchester is captured. They're outmanned, outgunned, and they're massacred almost in the attacks. The other wing of the army is fighting very well, but they're running out of ammunition. They're surrounded by this time. The general has been captured, and a white flag comes out calling for their surrender. The defeat is complete. Uh, there have been about 1,000 Americans, and 500 are captured, maybe 400 more dead, maybe 100 got away. The great controversy is whether or not the British did all they could to protect those who were unable to travel back to Fort Malden in Canada. Those who were so wounded or were unable to travel were left here in the care of physicians. Um, the general belief was that they would be protected. The Kentucky troops were noted for having attacked every Indian village they came upon on their way here from Kentucky. So when an opportunity came to exact revenge, they took the opportunity. The Indians just started going through these cabins. Then they realized, here's these wounded guys, Kentuckians that have probably killed our brethren. And the next thing you know, they start going cabin to cabin to cabin and, and pulling out uh, guys, shooting them, killing them. Uh, there was even uh, instances where the Indians, uh, if they couldn't drag the person out, set the cabin on fire. The building they're in is set afire, uh, up to 65 are killed, and that becomes known as the Massacre of the River Grazing. There's a story that the uh, Native Americans after the battle cut off the heads of about 100 of the Americans who'd been killed there and stuck them on a picket fence around the fort that they, their British allies were in. So as American soldiers went back, who'd been captured, went back and passed that fence, they saw the dead heads of those people who'd been fighting in that battle as well. River Raisin is one of those parts of Kentucky history that you can look at and say, how did we ever let it happen? The brutal defeat at the Battle of the River Raisin shocked Kentuckians back home. Combined with other humiliating losses from Detroit to Fort Meigs, morale plunged and the remote frontier of Kentucky suddenly seemed dangerously exposed. What happened here at the River Raisin is a lesson that uh, impacted the country greatly. At the time it happened, uh, General William Henry Harrison reported back that this was the greatest national calamity that could have occurred. The River Raisin Massacre is something that uh, the you know, Americans just hold on to and, and you know, grab hold of and say, this is exactly what we're talking about. It fits well within that American idea of where the Indians fit into the war, that they are allies of the British, that they're not civilized, and that the British are more than willing just to let them loose 
and just you know have the you know have their way with with American soldiers and wounded and, and whatnot. The river raisin does not come out of a vacuum. The actions taken by the native peoples within that incident are coming after these attacks by Harris and the ways in which villages were destroyed. The warfare in this Western theater had been escalated in such a way. It shouldn't be surprising that there would be in conflict. The Western theater of the war, from American military perspective, is largely just a bungled mess for the first two-thirds of the, of the conflict, really. You couldn't point to where the line of battle was, and so you hear you're behind enemy lines, here you're not. It is much more kind of difficult to get a, to get a handle on how things were progressing 